Let's talk about the engines. The power plants, the initial examination of both engines reveals no evidence of an in-flight fire, of a catastrophic engine failure, or an uncontainment. Both fans were able to be rotated by hand at the accident site. And the preliminary on-site look at the engines reveals no evidence, no evidence of bird ingestion. Our human performance investigators have been uh, interviewing um, the pilots that were in the area. There were three instructor pilots who were operating uh, on or above the Montgomery County Air Park uh, about the time of the accident. So three instructors, one was in the traffic pattern and two were on the ground. So if the accident airplane, if this would be the runway, the accident airplane was approaching this way on runway 14, they crashed over here. One of the airplanes, the airplane in flight was turning his, from his downwind leg to the base leg. Again, the accident would have been here. So this pilot would have had a view of the accident airplane. So there was that pilot and two that were on the ground. Two pilots reported seeing the accident plane and both reported seeing a series of pitch and roll excursions, steep bank angles, large pitch angles. The pilot who reported birds on the advisory frequency, and of course it's been, uh, I've listened to the, uh, uh, to the air traffic, to the uh, live ATC, and I've heard the recordings of the accident pilot coming in for, for landing, and I've heard the reports of the birds. Uh, the pilot who reported the birds on the advisory frequency told investigators that birds were located about a thousand feet down the runway and that they were on the ground and not in the air. So the birds were supposedly about a thousand feet down the runway on the ground, not in the air. He stated that he did not observe any birds in the vicinity of the accident airplane or along the approach path. Our systems analysts are reviewing the flight data recorder data and locating various aircraft systems in the wreckage. Uh, weather activity uh, at the airport. Uh, the weather observation was taken about 10 minutes prior to the accident at 10.35 a.m. is when the weather reporting weather report was generated. It reported uh, uh, winds out of the northeast at six knots, 10 miles visibility. A few, a few clouds reported at 2,100 feet above ground, an overcast layer at 3,200 feet above ground, and a temperature of minus one degree Celsius, minus one Celsius. Today, our air traffic control specialists have been interviewing controllers who handled the accident flight. Our aircraft performance investigators are working to determine if the aircraft was performing as designed. And our investigation is being assisted by the Federal Aviation Administration, the National Air Traffic Controllers Association, SANIPA. SANIPA is the Accident Investigation Authority of Brazil where the aircraft, um, where the state of aircraft manufacturer is, the type certificate for the uh, Embraer for the Phenom 100 is located in Brazil. So their accident investigation authority is, is assisting us. As well as the Transportation Safety Board of Canada, which is where the engines are manufactured. And we're, we're also being assisted with technical expertise from the air, air frame manufacturer, Embraer, as well as the engine manufacturer, Pratt & Whitney of Canada. I especially want to thank the American Red Cross, the Army Reserve Unit of Gaithersburg, as well as the local responders. They have been absolutely 
a pleasure to work with under very trying conditions, and we very much appreciate their unwavering support. As I wrap it up, I just want to point out that this is really just day one of the on boots on the ground phase of the investigation. There's a lot that needs to be done, but already a lot has been done. Um, so uh, that's the uh, end of my prepared remarks. I'd be glad to take any questions you may have. Back here, yes, sir. Yes, the airplane, an airplane has three, three axes. Uh, it has a pitch axis, so the longitudinal axis where the nose pitches up and down. It has a roll axis where the wings go from side to side, and it has a yaw axis. So what, what is being reported to us and also what is being corroborated by the preliminary look of the flight data recorder information is that the airplane did pitch up, uh, had, had uh, pitch excursions as well as roll excursions. Well, we're not here, and I've said this yesterday, and I didn't say it today, but we're here to collect the factual information. We are not here to determine the cause of the accident. That uh, We're here to look at the perishable evidence, which is the information that can go away with the passage of time. So we're here to, to collect that information and not perform analysis at this point. I'm sorry? Thank you, Kelly. Thank you very much. Did the cockpit voice recorder uh, pick up the pilot's voice? And, and, and yes, it did. And uh, I, I uh, have not uh, heard the CVR myself, and so I don't know exactly what was said on the CVR, but our investigators have done a, pre a preliminary listen of that, and we will be convening a group to perform a very detailed uh, readout of that CVR that will be released at some point. Alan, and then young man from the Washington Post, Ashley. Is it, do we have information that we can report to you at this point on the speeds during the approach? And uh, I do not have that information. And again, all, ev everything that we have is very preliminary at this point. So Ashley, and then we'll come over here. Instead of repeating erroneous information, let me just, let me tell you. The lowest point of airspeed, not throttle position, airspeed was 88 knots. And that occurred about, well, I don't know exactly how many seconds prior to impact that occurred, but I can tell you that the stall warning occurred about 20 seconds before the end of the recording and continued throughout. So let me make sure I've answered your question. And that is to be... All right, forgive us uh, live television here. We, I think, got the bulk of this new information from the NTSB there in Gaithersburg as they briefed the press with the latest information. And just uh, revisiting that detail, if you're just joining us now, we learned from the NTSB, this is what's new today, 20 seconds before the end of that recording, presumably when the crash occurred, there was an automatic stall warning that sounded in the airplane, and the audio in that automatic warning states stall stall indicating an aerodynamic stall and he clarified that was not indicating an engine stall uh, he also said that the lowest recorded airspeed was 88 knots uh, and he referred to that being in the final uh, moments of this crash uh, he also emphasized that the uh, 
very strange uh, uh, approach of this aircraft that, that witnesses uh, noted and that the evidence shows so far indicate that there was excursions, large excursions is the way he described this, in pitch, meaning the, the plane going up and down, and roll, meaning left to right, side to side, so that there was very erratic flight pattern of this aircraft just before it crashed. He said that all the evidence indicates that the aircraft was intact prior to its initial impact based on the, uh, the, the flu fuselage that's there on the scene and the state of that fuselage. So it does not uh, indicate that there was a fire or some type of explosion before the crash happened. Uh, that there's no evidence of any bird ingestion and by looking at the evidence there and the engines specifically there on the scene, no evidence of bird ingestion, and also went further in detail on that, saying that other pilots in the area, uh, again, confirming that they saw those large pitch angles with the flight going up and down, uh, the plane uh, up and down. Uh, also, one pilot said they did see birds in the area, but that the birds were in a distance away from the aircraft and that they were on the ground at the time. Uh, and also telling us that there was a recording of the pilot's voice in that con uh, cockpit uh, voice recorder. Uh, he personally had not heard that, and that has not been released uh, just yet now, 24 hours, uh, uh, 30 hours after this crash happened. We want to get live reaction now from the scene. Caroline Tucker has been reporting live from that neighborhood in Gaithersburg all day, and she's been talking to neighbors uh, uh, as we learn new details from the NTSB and from Montgomery County fire investigators. And uh, I imagine, you know, as we learn more of the de these details, the chaotic final moments of this flight, three souls lost on the plane, three more on the ground. Uh, the more we learn, it's just uh, such a tragedy. Yeah, it's very much a tragedy here in this Gaithersburg community, in this neighborhood. And just behind me, Mike, I'm going to show you just what NTSB was talking about when they were going through their preliminary investigation into the crash site here and what was left over from this plane. You can see, you know, parts of the plane of the side here on this flatbed truck have been hoisted onto um, uh, this truck so they can take it away for further investigation. But just beyond it up there um, towards the front of the truck, you see those two engines that NTSB was talking about and they had said that there was no evidence of any bird ingestion ingest, uh, ingestion into those engines and as we can see here we don't notice any signs of it here as well and that's something that they were concerned about because witnesses had mentioned that at the time but you know this is something that um, neighbors here in this community have been concerned about when it comes to the safety of these planes and the flight paths that they take and we did talk to some groups this afternoon about the safety and what they would like to see done in the future. Now, the Air Park Concerned Citizens Alliance, they actually plan to meet tonight to talk about the next steps for changes out at the air park. And the group told us it is desperately seeking changes that is desperately seeking change that has raised over the last few years since at least 2006. Now also the head of the nearby East Village Homeowners Association tells us the situation has been trying to work with the air park and county for years but they haven't really gotten very far. Now this crash is a tragedy no one could have expected killing those on board and Marie Gemmel and her two children inside a home here. Now community groups say they want changes like new flight patterns and control tower among other things. I'd, l I'd like to see there be a little bit more of a stringent control over um, the air park flying regulations um, as far as times. Um, I know that on the weekends they'll start anywhere from 6 a.m. onward. Um, so when you're in a residential community, um, yes, it was there when we bought our homes. Um, however, we weren't necessarily here at 6 a.m. to hear the planes going overhead. Um, and they'll go as late as 10, 11 o'clock at night. Now, one of the community groups told me today that about 30% of the homes in nearby neighborhoods surrounding the airport were not even built when the new flight patterns went into existence that were approved by the FAA in the early um, to mid 1990s. But they would like to see some changes in light of this crash that recently happened yesterday. But once again, you can see the evidence behind us this is going to be trucked off, and I'm sure NTSB is going to be taking a further look to get some clues as to what exactly happened here. Mike, back to you.
Caroline, such a surreal scene behind you, having been out there reporting there yesterday. I noticed by the end of the night when all the media left and a lot of the residents, neighbors uh, went home due to the cold and the time, you know, it was late at night, they finally left. And the sad reality, I think, started to sink in of this tragedy happening to this poor family that lost a mother and two young children, including an infant. How would you describe the mood there today among the residents who live on that street? It's easy to forget that there are people who live just across the street there from that on that cul-de-sac. Uh, we're seeing this GoFundMe page, $200,000 plus being raised to, to help the Gemler family. Uh, what's the mood? Oh, well, you know, we haven't really seen too many neighbors, especially in this cul-de-sac. I mean, there is a police line keeping a lot of cars and people except the media out from this area. And um, we've seen some neighbors, some kids who were coming through the area. I could hear some kids as they were getting off the school bus talking about how sad they were and how they knew the family. And, you know, they saw the kids out playing during the daytime and this was just a tragedy in their community. But, you know, I don't think anyone can really understand or imagine the magnitude of something like this. You know, a plane just falling out of the sky, crashing into your home. It's something that's very unexpected and the mood here, you know, just very quiet and very um, serene tonight. And I should correct myself, Gemmel is the last name of the family uh, so touched by this tragedy. Uh, Caroline Tucker, thanks so much for that update there from the scene. We'll check back in with our reporters there and get a full wrap up on that NTSB press conference coming up at the top of the hour. The time is now 447. Devin's up next with a look at the forecast.